and then I put her in my old bed. <laughs> Can I stop talking? Okay, so I put my mom in my old bed. I put her to my bed. No, to my bedroom. No bedroom. Hey, today we will talk about uh, this little guy. So not about him, but about the fork around our wrist, the liberation pledge. Which means actually that we refuse to eat with people on the table while they are eating animal products. And you might think maybe now, why would you do this? Why wouldn't you rather go to the people who are eating and start talking about activism, veganism, animals and stuff like that? And uh, about this we're gonna talk about uh, this video, we're gonna talk about our experiences, our opinions and you're gonna, uh, by the end of this video, get some clarity, either this is for you or not. And when I heard, first time hear about this was like, um, this is not cool, <laughs> this is not for me, I don't want to do this because then I, who I can eat with? People around me were not vegans, I didn't know any vegan, I just knew about some people in my the city, they were vegan, and I was like, okay, let me just check online. And what I did was actually that I went to check um, opinions of other vegans, is this good or not good, and I somehow found two people that you probably know, and you are as well. One was James Espy, another one was Joey Carbstrong. And James Espy was talking about how good it is to go and eat with non-vegans, their meals, and you are sitting there and you can talk about this topic because they are interested because you are vegan, you're eating vegan food, and your food is usually good and so on. And uh, I was like, oh yes, this is totally me. I want to do this in that way because I think it's the most uh, effective way because you are there, you're talking to them and that's it. And uh, Joey Carstrom was saying, no, this is uh, not cool because I would not uh, want to sit with people who are eating dogs or cats in front of me because it's just something that I don't support. And if you don't support this, why would you support other things? So then I was really, really in um, two words what to do. But then at the end, of course, I chose the one that I felt the most and this was James Hespi approach where I speak with people while I was eating. Even though they get maybe very defensive. Oh, and they, and they did. And they did. Because they're just doing the cruelty and you call them out in a way. And if you do this in a friendly way, they feel attacked. And the problem with that was that I was always feeling very uncomfortable. When I was uh, spe eating with my family, for example, I remember the first week I became vegan, I went home. And of course, uh, they knew me from before and I was on some diets, I was always athlete and always have some new ideas and so on. And I thought this is something, but just, oh, Matej just decided to go vegan for some time. <laughs> if and, they knew. And the thing is, when you understand veganism, you, you know why. And I became vegan as I am right now at that moment, like a few days after I, I started. And when I get to this lunch, it was very challenging because I was angry at everything. I saw everything differently, I was so disappointed of what we are doing and I really couldn't uh, relax, I couldn't eat with them in, in, with ease. I guess and, many uh, people can relate to that. I, I think I so, mean. I think so. But the thing mm -hmm. is that it's still maybe easier to just like be okay and don't mind me, I'm gonna bring my own food, whatever, mm -hmm. this is not me. That's why I took the pledge. So I took the liberation pledge and I was I think already around one year vegan, even a bit more, because I didn't do any activism. I didn't even know that this really exists and um, I remember this was shortly after I started my activism journey I met a friend who already took the liberation pledge but only for meat so he still sat on the table when people consume dairy and eggs but he explained me why he does this and uh, why he doesn't sit with people who eat meat but I didn't understand it since dairy and eggs are just as cruel as meat um, sometimes even crueler well um, because, it's hard to say it's cruel, but, but for sure it's like it's, even it's like more violent because, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I, I even told him that I don't get it, I get the liberation pledge thousand percent, but like why do you say to people in a way that their and eggs are better, but if they eat meat you stand up and you leave? So that's uh, when I decided to take the liberation pledge like for all animal products, um, he even as well afterwards, after we had some direct talk about this. Um, <laughs> that's why it's good to talk to people, that's yes. why it's good to... Let's talk. <laughs> Write in the comments what you think. Because if we don't share opinions, we cannot uh, change or reflect ourselves. Um, and yeah, I mean, for me, it was very difficult. It felt in a way like... And uh, coming out when I was vegan, I felt like having a coming out because like how will people react and um, will they find me extreme? I was a lot about what do other people think, even though you might not believe this now. <laughs> <laughs> I did really a whole process as well on, on my personal growth, and um, yeah, it was very difficult to announce them. Hey, I won't sit with you anymore on the table. I feel like I didn't do this even like from today to tomorrow. It was more a bit uh, want to go there, found some excuses, and then I said it. Um, but 
a bit less, not so direct, and then all of a sudden I could say it. So it was for me a journey. I was not as direct as Matei with the things from the very beginning on, just because my family were like uh, very together with many things. And um, yeah, honestly, the liberation pledge separated us quite a bit. I mean, my mom, for example, she's very understanding. Um, she organized a whole vegan dinner the other day um, for everyone but other parts of my family are not at all and this just leads to that we never eat together and this is basically the only thing they can do to invite you for dinner and since they will never cook vegan we don't meet anymore so much but for me this is okay because as Matei said that Joey Carbstrong said like I wouldn't tolerate if they eat that cute puppy dog uh, in, in front of me or a human or whatsoever so why would I sit with them if they eat uh, animal products which are just hella cruel as well we go to farms and then I see these dying animals and then I'm just like enjoy your meal and, and just not saying anything and the second thing is as well not good for my mental health at all mm. like we, we know what's behind no and as well us again we see these animals dying um, suffering and then just seeing them eating these body parts is just driving me crazy personally as well so for me it's just the best to stay out of these situations and it just feels so so much better for me Cool. So I decided to take the pledge one day on one event where I actually met Anya. This was Alex's best uh, sure. uh, workshop and uh, he was talking about Liberation Pledge and even before I was like flirting with this idea but I was like, no, this is not... You this... were yes, I did. I did actually. <laughs> and I was like, no, I have a business, I have a company, I need to eat with other people. I also have not, not so many vegan friends, although a lot, but still not so much that I can eat with them all the time. And I was like, no, this is not for me maybe. But then somehow Alex best, you can check him out. Um, he had really good points and I decided on the spot. And the mm -hmm. first story I want to share with you was the following. My family, how was this with my family? <laughs> because at the beginning... The already... nephew story? Oh yes. Okay. I mean, the, the first uh, thing was when I became vegan was hard for them because I was very direct. I was really like mm -hmm. easily um, offended. I was easily like angry and so on. And it was actually it was hard to talk to, especially with the family because you are more open with them. And the thing is that I decided to uh, take the pledge and not to eat with people who are eating and supporting animal cruelty. Um, and I remember specifically it was my nephew's birthday. He was, I don't know, three, four, five, it doesn't even matter. But the thing is it had, he, had, it had a birthday. he had a birthday. And uh, I told them in advance that I'm not going to eat with them if they eat animal products. And this was bad and they didn't like it and we had some arguments. But then again this uh, event came and uh, when they bring him the cake, I went away. And my mom got furious and then she got after me and she said, Matei, how can you do and this? And your mom is furious. I mean, yes, furious. yeah, she's. And she said, how can you do this? Because if you do this to us, I understand. I don't like it, but I understand. But you know, how can you do this to Jiva? And this time my, my <laughs> anger level went from <laughs> two to maybe 13. And it's cool. So that time I pulled my mom to my bedroom where I was living when I was younger and I locked the doors. And we started talking and she was almost crying, she couldn't understand what I'm doing this and then I showed her footage from the slaughterhouse without saying anything. And she was, oh, I don't want to see this, I know what's happening, you don't show me this. I was like, yes, you're going to see this because as long as you're going to tell me that I shouldn't be like this to Jiga, I will tell you you shouldn't be like this to animals because she was not vegan, she's still not vegan, unfortunately, although she's changing. Hopefully we all hope this, but the thing is, she's not vegan. And I showed her everything and she couldn't go out. It was pretty harsh, you know, but the thing is that after this, we never had dispute again about this topic. Every time I come home with Anya, myself, with other people and so on, when I'm home, it's everything vegan. On the table, or sometimes even in the fridge, there's nothing you know, vegan and so on because they really know that I, I don't like this. But the thing is that, of course, for me, this is sad. It's not about me. It's not because of me. But at least they understand why. And now I have zero problems. Even if I go at home, for example, for Christmas, I know for sure we're going to eat only vegan. Otherwise, I'm not going to be there. And this is like fact of life mm. with, with me and I, I believe you have different experiences uh, maybe because Anya I believe has a bit different yeah, one about this experience yeah. but the thing is that for me this voice you know because I put really really um, boundaries, boundaries. I, I told them why this is important how it's gonna be and this is like without limitation and of course if this wouldn't be the case then I wouldn't be there and that's it so yeah for me this was for sure quite different than from Matei um, I mean my mom at the beginning she was upset because she didn't understand it. She was like, how can you be so extreme? I even cook meat for others. She is vegetarian. Um, 
always getting more to veganism, which is amazing. I really hope she even says that she's vegan, but she even says that she's not. Yeah. Like what the fuck? Anyway, she wants to then, be. Who wouldn't? Yeah, but now, for example, she wouldn't cook meat anymore for other people. I think, but then she was like, but you don't have to force your opinion on others and like these classical things. But as well, I tried to show her footage. She didn't want to see it. I didn't lock her up in a room. However, I just stayed very strict on this that I don't want this. And um, now, as I said, she organizes vegan dinners and she even defends me in front of my uh, father or my grandmother who are really um, gossiping about me and how I can do this to them and that I'm separating the whole family. And now she's... you say to the camera that you know about this gossiping. Yeah, I actually know about this gossiping Good. because uh, my mom and my brother tell me and I'm very happy that they're so open. However, um, my grandma says that I'm forcing them, my, I force my ideology on them. But I mean, they force the ideology on the animals. I mean, the animals have to die for them. And this is just for the ideology. Yes, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, you know, it's not that we love our family not anymore. I tell this as well to my grandma and my father when they're upset. It's not that I love them anymore, but just as I don't want to see them beating up a black person um, or paying for child pornography or something that's like, fucking cruel. I don't want to be there where they are abusing actively animals. Um, and I tell them always, like, if you're not okay with cooking once a month a vegan dinner, um, we, I can come afterwards for a drink, for example. Like, to show them that it's not about them, but about their acts in the moment. And they still don't really understand it, but my mom said that the last time she was even very, very close to tell my grandmother that if they are not able to eat once so often vegan, that I can be there, they, she guesses that it's not so important for them that I'm sitting with them on the table. And I think this is very important because if people care about you, they will do this step. I mean, honestly, my best friend, um, he never ate animal products in front of me from the very beginning when I became vegan. I didn't even tell him this because I didn't know about the liberation pledge and I felt like I don't want to bother, but he never did because he knew how much this means to me and how um, much suffering this causes to me as well to see this. Um, he never did it out of respect. Mm -hmm. So if people really care about you, they will do this. Um, yeah, so I think it's very important to set the boundaries and to do what is good for you and not think about the others, but about the animals in this case. So, one of the hardest things with um, Liberation Pledge is that you cannot eat with people that you love and that you you're used to. to. Yes, but you cannot because they are not uh, eating um, food, but they are eating uh, animals who suffer. And the thing is that uh, I experienced this uh, right away because every year with my friends, for example, this uh, Christmas time and the New Year's mm -hmm. and so on, it's let's say it's like six, seven friends that we get together. We were playing poker at some points uh, a lot. Uh, we are still good friends, although we don't see each other, but once a year we get together for a dinner. And a few years ago, for, them, for example, when I took the pledge, actually the first year I took the pledge, uh, we started talking in December about this um, dinner. Mm -hmm. and Did they, you and about this? I don't think so. I, okay. I, I think so. But the thing is they wrote me and we started talking about the group chat. And I was like, really, oh, this would be amazing because I really didn't see them for some time. Um, I wanted to go. And of course I was like, oh, but this is going to be not cool and also I don't want to be there because I really don't feel good when seeing these animal products. So when we were talking in this group, I was actually in the store buying some things and I decided in the moment that I'm going to just make a video for them because it's way easier to express yourself through the video than to call or to write or whatever, you know, and, ju and just explain to the guys, you know, yeah, guys, I look forward to this, uh, this uh, dinner, I really want to come, but I must be honest, I, as you know, I'm vegan, I'm active for animals, I don't mm -hmm. want to cause them suffering. Uh, torture, I don't want to cause them that, and I decided to take the liberation pledge, which means that I cannot, I don't want to eat, not I cannot, I don't want to eat with people mm -hmm. who sit and eat animal products with me. I believe this is for you very weird, because people are not used to that, uh, but this is because of me, because I don't feel good about it, I cannot be myself, I cannot be okay, mm -hmm. I won't be feeling good with you, and I won't enjoy this company, I might even make uh, some um, challenging uh, um, energies in this room and so on, so I don't think this is fair to you as well. Um, so probably we won't see each other, but if you want, you know, because I really want us to get together, I can organize the thing, I can prepare where to go, we're gonna go to some vegan restaurant, everyone can eat whatever he wants, and we're gonna have a great time together because the basics is to, to be together and have fun. Uh, but you know what, if not, then it's um, more than okay, we're gonna see it some other occasion, so uh, let me know what you think. And the thing is that they, they were, oh, you know what, let's just go for this vegan dinner. <laughs> Okay, Even though cool. they were like against my, cool. my ways, against my activism, I mean my activism, what I did, how I did it and so on. I know this for a fact. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, it was like 
they understood that I didn't attack them mm-hmm. and I just talked about myself because really I wouldn't feel good and I understood and then we went for this dinner and we did this two years in a row even now I didn't tell you this we are talking for this year to mm-hmm. go together again Amazing. that's the point yeah but of course they know this is going to be vegan mm-hmm. and you know people accept these things and it's not about accepting it's about they start thinking and even if they don't go vegan immediately or now they still talk about these things even if they talk in uh, the way like oh this is stupid this is bad or this is like so weird they still talk about these things and it's something that you that makes you think i can say actually two things for this like one thing is i heard from my brother who goes to this uh, lunches with my grandma and family they Mm. talk every time about me and about veganism (laughs) even maybe not the best way but he defends me but this makes them work it makes them think that for me this is so important that i skip the yeah, dinners yeah. with them that they talk every time like i don't know 30 minutes about me at least mm-hmm. and um and it's good it shows just how consequent you are that this is really important for you and not just a diet choice um so i think this is very important to consider that even though you cannot talk with them when they eat mm-hmm. they they will think about the issue and um that it's really good and another thing what they said um that people will accept it. I mean, I made the experience that people didn't accept it. Um, friends who just then uh, don't want to see you anymore, who always find excuses, but it's good. I don't want them in my life anyway. You know, like now I really met amazing people like Matei. Oh my God, he's really the love of my life. I'm so mm. happy we're getting married. But- um, I'm the lucky one, actually. <laughs> but as well, other people. I have so amazing friends now in my life who don't abuse animals or who are okay with this like it's actually just my best friend's friend always i don't have non-vegan friends anymore but just let me tell you again if someone doesn't accept the fact that you don't uh that to eat vegan with you they are not true friends and then you're with, way better off w- without them um and the last thing Matei said is uh, that he cannot eat with them or he can uh, doesn't want to eat with them no with the friends with my grandma i have always this discussion because she's always like oh no you cannot eat with us and i always say no i don't want to eat with you because you have cruelty on your table and she gets furious like yeah this makes it even worse but no it's i mean really this is so bad that they to do the animals this is not worse it just shows that we're serious about this issue and yeah but something needs to be said as well. You know, first of all, I have a lot of non-vegan friends still, and uh, talking to them about this topic it's very harsh because they are not used to. They don't even know what this means, this relation pledge and this fork and so on. Also, I don't even use it. You know, I don't wear it like this. I just have it now for some symbolic thing. But I know why I'm doing these things. But the thing is, you know, when you speak with these people and you say these things, of course, in short term, this might seem like terrible or maybe bad, maybe even like, oh, this is bad for veganism, this is bad for us, for you, and whatever. But in long term, this is the way to show that something is wrong, something is happening that's not okay, mm-hmm. something, people need to rethink things. And if you want to inspire other people, then we need to be first inspiration for ourselves, for each other, and mm-hmm. then for others. And not thinking about short term what they will say this Sunday, on the, or maybe these holidays, but how this will affect other people. Because we affect other people if we're in a bad mood, for example, every day. Mm-hmm. If you're in a good mood, we affect them as well. And also we affect them if we don't eat and don't eat uh, animal products in front of them or with them and so on, because mm-hmm. This shows clearly that if you don't, for example, this is the easiest way to explain maybe to people, if you would not eat with your neighbor who is eating his dog, who just uh, who he's just baked, or his cat or something, and you would really, really like, oh, I don't like this, I don't want this, and you probably wouldn't be there as eating and supporting this in a way like, oh, it's okay, it's not okay, and it's the same for other animals as well. I saw a picture actually on Instagram that I found very good um, from Graphic Vegans actually, they said, um, don't think about what kind of vegan other vegans or non-vegans want you to be think about what kind of vegan the animals want you to be and they want you to be consequent they want you to speak up for them in every way possible because they're the victims and it's about them now just let me tell you there's no right or wrong with the liberation pledge we're strongly convinced that this is the way to go for us but as well to speak up about the issue but of course it doesn't make you less vegan if you don't take the liberation pledge you need to do this how this feels good for you as well i have some strong links at my workplace now so maybe it's okay if i start with the, the work situation um I mean, before I was a branch manager in a travel agency when I started with the Liberation Pledge and 
then I was very clear about it and I said, hey, I either I eat vegan at the brunch manager meetings or um, I'm not there. And she said that she cannot force everyone, the CEO, to eat vegan. So I ate by myself in an office. Um, but for me this was completely okay because this could tell to all the other branch managers why I do this. Like there were like 10 people around and for me this was very important to share. Um, which maybe made them think. But now um, I'm in a nursing school and for six months I need to work in a retirement home. Normally I'm not. I'm in a domicile nursing where I don't touch at all animal products because um, yeah, I don't work with that. But now I have to for this six months. I have to um, cut meat for people. I um, yeah have to sit with the patients, of course, when they cannot eat. And when the first month was terrible, I wanted to quit my whole studies, even if I'm very good at work with the people uh, in the school, I'm very good, but it was just devastating me to see these products. I had all the time like flashbacks from farms, from, from the slaughterhouses. Um, but then I decided to still do it because on long term, I might be able to open a vegan retirement home or I don't know do something amazing with my medical knowledge and with my diploma because it's uh, the highest diploma that you can mm -hmm. have in nursing that I will get um, that I decided okay I, I'm going over my borders and I am accepting something that normally I would never because on long term this makes sense for me um, yeah so this I think work can be some challenging thing but we really need to um, ask ourselves is it necessary or not or how do we want to deal with the situation um, I don't know how it was for you, or actually I know, but it's just I mean, but the, the, first, no? the first thing about this is, for example, that we um, we live in non-vegan world, yeah. so we are constantly around non-vegan products, uh, non-vegan things and so on, and uh, you have to somehow do a slalom with these things, uh, because mm -hmm. of course you don't want to support this in any case, but for example, imagine with everyone who is vegan would take this pledge and say, oh, I'm not eating with you uh, if you're doing these kind of things because it makes me feel really bad and so on. People start thinking and if this is like a critical mass of people who are doing these kind of things, we would be way further. But then again, of course, it's uh, not so easy and that's why also this approach of James Espy, you know, who is mm -hmm. actually sitting with non-vegans uh, while they are eating and talking to them and so on, this is also doable. But then again, you have to understand, you have to be strong enough to talk about these things and not to be quiet because I think the worst thing is if you are then, oh, I'm going to be James Espy. <laughs> I'm gonna just eat with other people and uh, not talk about animals at all. This for me is like not cool. That's the worst. Yeah, this is not cool. And in this case, you know, you have to understand why you're doing things. And also, we want to see a change in the world. We're not vegan because we want to be vegan. Mm. We're not activists because we don't have anything else to do. <laughs> We're talking about this all the time. We want to do so many other things, but no. we want to do this because this is so important mm. that we need to do somehow this for the animals and for other people as well mm. and the earth and everything. And I really think that each decision, I mean, you reflect what is the most effective. When I was new in this retirement home, I think after one week, one woman, she told me, oh, my daughter is vegan and I don't know what, and I decided to eat with them that day. And because, well, it was a break and they had some milk, coffee or whatever, but I had such a crazy good conversation because I talked about my activism, about my court cases, about like how important this is and that normally I wouldn't even eat with them, but I just wanted to share in the break and normally when we work I don't have time for this. Um, it was a fucking cool conversation, like uh, one kid, she's like 17, she was like, I want to go vegan, this is very good. Um, the other one was as well with the open mouth and didn't w uh, want to eat her cheese anymore. Um, so for me in that moment this made more sense and that's why there is not one right or wrong, but on you know, the long term, for me, it feels way more right to not eat with them. Hey, if you're not taking the liberation pledge, t take the guts to talk about animal suffering when the people are doing it. Because otherwise you just make them feel comfortable and they, sh I mean, they shouldn't feel comfortable when abusing animals. Yeah. yeah. Just, just think you were the victim and how you would want people to speak up for you and then decide for yourself what's the most effective because we don't know. No one of us knows what's effective and what is not. And maybe something that I'm doing might be completely ineffective when you do it the same way, but something you do, I cannot replicate because I'm a completely different person. So just, yeah. The bottom line is speak for the animals in a way that you think it's effective, but for sure it's not effective if you go there, eat with people who are eating animal okay, products sorry. and be like, oh, I'm sorry that I'm vegan. Oh, it's okay if you eat meat, no problem. No, no worries about me. I'm not judging you, this is not me. This is showing that you're not strong enough to stand for what is right. And uh, this is your problem. And I'm sorry to say this, but you need to work on yourself. And that's why we're big on um, personal growth. And we're gonna talk about this topic even more because mm -hmm. I think it's the key to be successful, uh, to be happy and to find the people that you want in your life uh, that are the best for you, like I did. <laughs>
Anyway, uh, if you like our content, then uh, like this video. Uh, comment below, let us know if you agree or disagree with us and also what is your opinion. And of course subscribe to our channel because we want to grow as a community. We want to get more um, very cool guests for our podcasts and uh, make way more great content. And as well if you want to have another topic to be covered about our activism, about veganism, please let us know as well in the comments so that we can make as well a video about the topic that is interesting to you. <laughs> it's good, huh? <laughs>